It's our final video of the year, and we can finally walk you through a project that has taken us all year to see to completion. That's right, we have got the tour of our Ultimate Klipsch Heritage Home Theater for 2022. <laughs> Now we first reviewed the corn walls back in July, and ever since then I have continued to fine tune things to get them just right. Not just for Two Channel, but for home theater as well. Running this channel, it is a full time gig, and finding the time to sneak in personal listening sessions, never mind hauling around 200 pound speakers between all of our other reviews, ain't exactly easy. But over the past 12 months, I've tweaked, I've experimented, and I've definitely learned some things along the way. The plan for this theater actually began all the way back in our old Austin home last year. And while it may seem crazy to some, every home we considered had to be able to accommodate every aspect of this channel, including a substantial home theater setup. And while you may be wondering why not just build a dedicated theater, in the past I have, and over the course of my career, I've had three dedicated theaters, and all three had one very big thing in common. No one ever used them. And when I was coming up, I was certain that if I had a dedicated theater, I would use it and I'd watch movies like all the time. But fantasy and reality are often different. So for our new house, I knew I wanted our main living room to be able to be both a cozy and inviting space as well as a capable home theater. Now, one thing I loved about my old theaters was the presence of big, efficient horn speakers, similar to what you're going to find in a real commercial cinema. Call me crazy, but as good as Conan Dome speakers are, per listen, I'm talking about you, there's just something about horns and home theater that excites me. So even before we moved, I knew I wanted to build a theater around a pair of Klipsch Heritage loudspeakers. I just didn't know which ones. <laughs> After weighing all the potential pros and cons, including Chrissy and I's love for the La Scala's, we decided to take the leap and had a pair of custom Cornwall 4s made to match our new interior design. And we chose a light oak veneer, which to this day, it still turns my head. I know I'm probably biased, but I think our Cornwalls are some of the most beautiful speakers I have ever seen. So with the Cornwalls ordered, it was time to tackle the rest of the system. Now back in Austin, we relied on upward firing speakers in order to review Dolby Atmos setups. But as you can see, this new space is quite different. And I had a hunch that our higher ceilings would render upward firing Atmos speakers speakers useless, so a different solution had to be found. A living space can easily become overwhelmed visually when there are a lot of speakers, so going with in-wall or in-ceiling speakers for surround and Atmos channels made the most sense. Only if there's one thing Christy dislikes more than seeing a bunch of speakers, it's in-walls and in-ceilings. And since one side of our main room is open to another part of the home, in-wall speakers were out of the question, which narrowed our search to in-ceiling speakers. I know there are a lot of thoughts about what you need and don't need in a surround Atmos speaker system with respect to its performance and specs. Ideally, you're going to want to surround yourself with the same speakers if you can, as that's going to give you the best chance for absolute sonic coherence front to back, side to side, and overhead. But I'm not about to use two more pairs of corn walls for surrounds and back channels, never mind trying to mount two or four in our ceiling. But commercial cinemas don't often use the same speakers across all of their channels either. In fact, a lot use speakers not unlike what you may have in your home, at least in terms of specifications. My old theater used compact cinema surrounds from JBL, and those speakers had rather consumer-friendly specs, such as a frequency response that only dipped down to about 50 hertz or so, hardly full range. So if 50 to 60 hertz was okay for Hollywood, surely an in-ceiling capable of similar performance was going to be good enough for me. So we got our hands on six six-inch diameter clips in ceiling speakers to serve as our surround back and Atmos channels. Now, if you caught our initial renovation series, you already have seen how we chose to lay out our surround speakers. The two Atmos speakers rest above and just slightly in front of where most left and right main speakers would go, followed by the next pair resting overhead but to the sides of our primary listening position, with the remaining two behind our listening position. This configuration allows us to test surround sound systems up to 7.1.2 and everything in between, which is clutch, because not every film is mastered in 7.1.2. 
5.1 or 5.1.4, so I love this system's flexibility. And after playing with our Cornwalls all year and kind of learning their unique quirks, I opted not to go with our usual subwoofers, but rather try something new, something smaller. While I love our Klipsch SPL100 subwoofer, it's just too much of a brute paired with the Cornwalls. After some EQing, the Cornwalls really only need their bass augmented rather than replaced. Believe it or not, the best subwoofer I have found for this type of use is the Powers & Wilkins ASW608. The 608, it's a small sub, hardly BMW's best or most powerful, but it is so good at blending into a speaker's frequency response and disappearing both visually and orally that it actually ranks among my favorite personal hi-fi finds of the past year. This inexpensive sub has everything you need, including speaker level inputs. While the sub isn't going to play down to 20 hertz with the authority of say a 12 inch sub, it plays low enough and with a ton of finesse that I prefer its more agile sub sound to its lack of brute force. Now, as for power, here's another curveball for you. Since our review of the Cornwalls back in July, I have tested them on a few different receivers, my favorite two being the Marantz 8015, as well as our Onkyo RZ50. Both of these receivers have the goods to make this setup sing with the RZ50's Dirac capability, giving it a bit of an edge in our room with the Cornwalls over the Marantz. But the receiver I actually prefer for this setup is the Yamaha Avantage A4A. The A4A has one key feature that for me is a game changer and that is full manual parametric EQ. Now a lot of receivers, they're gonna give you auto room correction or a multi-band graphical EQ, but very few give you the ability to create your own PEQ curves and the Yamaha does. I prefer to tune my theater setups manually. Now I'm not saying that I'm gonna do a better job than Dirac or Odyssey. Okay, I'm gonna do a better job than Odyssey, but I like having control over what I want to correct and the Yamaha, more than just about any receiver we've had, lets me tinker until I'm satisfied. And I think the results speak for themselves. The Cornwalls are lively fun, but sometimes they're really peaky, especially down low and up top. PEQ lets me keep things more or less in better alignment for even more detail to shine through with tighter, more nuanced bass. That's all I'm gonna say about the Cornwall Yamaha relationship because I'm saving the other juicy details for our A4A review. Now, as happy as I've been throughout this process, there is one area where I feel there's still room for improvement, and that is the center channel. Now, initially, I had just planned on using one of our Heresy 4s below our screen, seeing as how that speaker was originally designed as a center speaker way back in the day. While I could split our media benches to accommodate a single Heresy, doing this puts the Cornwalls too far apart for best results in our room. So as much as I had hoped for the Heresy to work in this setup, sometimes your room will just force you to make other plans plans. So what you're seeing here is actually my version of a custom wrap RP500C from Klipsch. Keeping it real as much as I typically like this center speaker, I do not believe it is a good match for the Cornwalls. Having now completed this experiment, I would opt for a phantom center because the Cornwall center image, when properly set up, is pretty stellar and tonally better than the 500C. The 500C isn't as open and transparent as the Cornwalls throughout the mid-range and treble, definitely calling more attention to itself as the sound goes for being more wall-like to box-like. Again, not trying to poo-poo on the 500C. If we had reference Premier speakers throughout rather than Heritage, it would probably be ideal. But in this scenario, I just don't recommend it. Which I guess leads me to my newest request of Klipsch. Please make a few Heritage-inspired center channel options. It isn't enough to offer a center with a Tractrix horn tweeter. It's the Heritage speaker's horn mid-range that I think is the secret sauce. So please find a way to give users both in the form factor smaller or more flexible than a Heresy, and I think you're gonna be on to something. Oh, and by the way, I think we're all still waiting for my Heritage sub. All in all, and most importantly, anchored by the Cornwall 4s, this setup is just a lot of fun and has transformed my space sonically into a true cinema. Unlike my old reference room that used actual theater speakers, the Klipsch setup gives me all of the thrills, but manages to be even more nuanced while looking good out in the open. I love watching big blockbuster action films, and few home theaters have managed to do a better job, placing me right at the heart of the action, taking me on such just a, a visceral ride like this setup does. 
While maybe not sonically perfect in every regard, what I love most about this setup and the Cornwalls in general is just the fact that they have this sense of occasion, both physically and orally. And they present sound in such a way that's just really unique. It's one that I always find myself wanting to return to even after sampling something that may be technically better. What else is there to say except to say that the only one who has to like the sound of one system is you. And I really like the sound of this system. All right, guys, that's it. That's our last video of 2022. I don't even know how many we did this year. A lot. I don't know a lot. A lot. Um, my question of the day, which one was your favorite? Which video? Which video? Yeah. Which video was your favorite? Um, doesn't have to be this one. Could be this one. I don't know. <laughs> Just let us know. Which one was your favorite? I know which, fav which is my favorite. Which one's your favorite? I think I am most proud of the Polk R700 review. Mm -hmm. Not the review. I mean, the review was good. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I felt the conversation oh, really yeah. just. It put a bow on it. Do dove into mm. a lot of what I think people struggle with in yeah. this hobby. So that to me was mine. What was yours? Was um, it the same? It is a tie. Oh. It is a tie. It's a tie with that one. And not the final reveal of this room, but I think building the slat wall video, um, as much as you guys like to give me crap for saying that that, ooh, home renovation is stressful. Um, I just really liked that video. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was different. And you guys really turned out and watched it. So I was really proud of that. Um, yeah, I think those two. For very, very, very different, different reasons. reasons. Very yeah, different I, reasons. I, I'm into that. But I am curious, guys. What was your favorite? So let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. This is actually going to be really important going into the new year. I know no one likes notifications, but you probably should hit that bell because some of you are saying you're not even seeing our new videos. We publish every Thursday and Sunday, so turn on notifications. And they subscribe. And you subscribe, so turn on notifications so you don't miss out. Uh, if you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you've continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you all very, very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File. And that's it for us today and for the year. Yeah, we hope everybody had a really good holiday yeah. and that you've been safe and warm and had the opportunity to be with your family. Yeah, yeah. We, we hope you all have had a great holiday, continue to have a great holiday because New Year's is like this weekend. Uh, we will see you Sunday, but until then, have fun, be safe, be chill, enjoy your system because the only person who has to like the sound of it is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the new year. Bye.